Should you play Breath Edge? I have no idea who breathed on whose edge or what's happening here. Breath Edge, everybody. Honestly, if I were to say that I had no idea why I was playing Breath Edge, it would be a lie. Because I do have an idea. And that idea is actually a fact, which is that someone had to have paid off Jacksepticeye to play Breath Edge on Steam when it officially came out on February 25th. And on that day, I just so happened to need a new game to play. I was allured by Jacksepticeye floating through space while a beautiful song played in the background. Grandpa's Moog. <laughs> And wanted to put myself in this let's play Irishman's shoes. Do I watch Jacksepticeye on YouTube? Not at all, actually. But watching him on Steam for about two minutes had me going like, Wow, that's amazing! Why? Because my mind's easily susceptible to Irishmen due to the fact that they have leprechauns. And I'm not talking about the cute ones. If you haven't seen any of the leprechaun movies, then you don't know how scary leprechauns are. They kill people in the hood. In space. And in their YouTube studios. You better not be talking about me. <laughs> nope. Mexicans do not get killed like this in horror movies. I'm out. So it only makes sense that they'd hire Jacksepticeye into manipulating. Wait, no. Intimidating people into playing this game. Leprechaun, me dear. Breath Edge has a story that I can only describe as delightful, not spoil too much. But seeing as I never beat the game, I wasn't really able to explore the story enough to spoil much to begin with. But from what I did see, it was delightful. No. And sometimes, delightfully dull. This game's not letting me go anywhere. To the point where it made me experience severe narcolepsy. That's a pretty good story. I just know that initially some robot dudes are mad at you and beating you up, then you spit on them, they hit you again and all of a sudden you're telling them a story about how you got to them or something along those lines. Honestly, I don't fucking know. Then you get thrown into space after an explosion and are like, wow, what the fuck happened here? Breath Edge's writing is a lot at times, and it's not that the dialogue that the game provides is terrible but more so that it's very hit or miss. It feels like the writers got together and started yelling out random lines of dialogue, and instead of deciding which lines of dialogue were funny, they chose to keep everything. You still not die? It is that great. I reread message and think you think I want harm you, do you? I'm not sure about the composition of modern mail. Therefore, I advise you to be careful. The current physical properties are unknown. The music is no different from the dialogue in terms of quality. The music when you're inside of your different home bases is either pretty great to listen to or just absolutely the opposite of good. The song when you're traversing through space though, now that's something. It's beautiful, it's beamish, and it's breathtaking as it straps you on a journey through the protagonist's emotional turmoil and makes you contemplate life. Why am I playing a game filled with mediocrity? Am I wasting my life playing Breath Edge? Are we all actually too afraid to admit that we're terrible people in order to realize that we should grow from our past traumas in order to become better human beings? But even with all of this said, the game feels like a good old slow burner. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch The Revenant, Midsommar, or Black Swan, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Go on now, I'll be waiting. Or just listen to me tell you what it is, because the concept's not that complicated. Slow burners are just movies that take a really long time to get to the climax, and nothing really happens until that point. Slow burner doesn't mean that these movies are bad, as a lot of them have intriguing stories carried on by their artistic shells. And while Breath Edge's story is a little lacking, the artistic shell breaks through. The graphics in Breath Edge are astounding as traversing each location brings about a story with little explanation needed. As you're exploring the explosion of the ship, you see constant dead bodies scattered around space. Each is placed in a distinctive way that induces humor or curiosity from the player in the most eloquent of manners. Every area feels unique to what it's trying to provide for the game. The region where the player collects paint and lead has a bronze tint to it that looks like a Jackson Pollock painting in terms of what it provides for the atmosphere. The area where you get resin for fuel is a beautiful mess of turrets and debris that mesh like constructivism. 
and the way in which a mayonnaise explosion feels frozen in time cuts through space's dark blue colors, leading the player to be enraptured in its post-impressionistic movements. Oh my god, it's beautiful! I can die now! But going back to my slow burner point, while slow burners can be great when it comes to film, don't you fucking talk about it. They can be pretty shit when it comes to video games. No. And turn them into la 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 the dreaded walking simulator. Oh! And when this is the case in any game, it doesn't really matter how beautiful its graphics are or how mediocre its story is, which leads me right into gameplay. Some dumb Irish guy compared Breath Edge to Subnautica a couple years ago when it was an early access, but that guy had no idea what he was talking about. Out in the base, fuck! Breath Edge's gameplay revolves around creating different items to gather materials in order to create more items so that the story can progress. Every tool that the player crafts to gain materials to create other tools has a set number of uses, and once those uses are gone, the player has to then craft another one of the exact same tool, which takes for fucking ever. <sighs> you see him? That's me. And you know exactly how I got into this situation. The majority of the gameplay I experienced was progressing to one point, to then not having enough materials. This game is fucking evil, dude. And having to go back to my home base, to then going back to the point I progressed to, and repeating that over and over again for about six hours. It takes forever, and I mean forever, to traverse space. I played the game in story mode, which I later found out was not the intended way of playing the game. Rather, it was the standard mode, in which you have to keep track of food, water, and oxygen. Had I started on standard mode, I would have still been in chapter 1, floating around looking for supplies to keep me safe, and never trekked into chapter 2, which took me 3 long hours of floating around to get to. In chapter 2, I unlocked the space vacuum, which made me travel a little bit quicker, but didn't make Breath Edge any more enjoyable. The back and forth isn't as entertaining as it might be in other survival type games such as Subnautica or Valheim, which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago and has the progression feel natural while remaining exciting. Instead, Breath Edge is drawn out and monotonous. I can't say if the game gets any better, and I'm sure that the story along with the game has the potential to do so. Breath Edge is just too much of the same thing, and no amount of gorgeous graphics is going to make up for that. So, should you play Breath Edge? If you're Jacksepticeye and able to get paid to play this game two years after it was released, even though you'd played it before and didn't somehow die from overdosing on how bored you were, then go for it. But if you're a regular human being who does not traverse the hood, space, and YouTube studios killing people, I'd recommend you stay away. I'm a leprechaun, my dear.